This is a review of solving linear inequalities. Linear inequalities are a lot like linear equations, and we're going to use basically the same algebraic approach to solving them. Uh, again, solving means isolating the variable. We want to isolate x out of this inequality, and we'll do it just like we would if we were isolating x in an equation. So the first thing we're going to do is try to get all of our x's together on one side so that we'll be closer to having only one x left in our final answer. Right now I've got x's on both sides. Uh, I've got 3x on the left and minus x on the right. So let's make sure we only have x's on the left side in this solution. So to get rid of this minus x on the right, I'm going to do the opposite operation in order to cancel with it. The opposite of subtracting x would be adding x. So I'm going to take 14 minus x and add x. But I need to do that to both sides of the inequality. So 3x plus 2 plus x. And I carry down my inequality symbol, the less than sign, the same way I would an equal sign. So on the left, now I can combine like terms. 3x plus x is 4x. And on the right side, the whole point was to be able to cancel. Minus x plus x is 0. So I just have 14 on the right. And then continue. Uh, let's get rid of the 2 on the left side by subtracting 2 from both sides. So 4x plus 2 minus 2 is less than 14 minus 2. And then plus 2 minus 2 cancel. So I have 4x on the left. 14 minus 2 is 12 on the right. And finally, to isolate the x, this is x times 4. So to isolate it, I will have to do the opposite operation, which is dividing by 4. x times 4 divided by 4. I divide both sides by 4. And then doing that, I can see f uh, on the left side it gives me just x. x times 4 divided by 4 gives me x back. On the right, I have 12 divided by 4. That simplifies to just 3. So I've isolated x, and I've got a nice simple expression for it. x is less than 3. What this is telling me is I can plug in any number that's less than 3, and it will satisfy the original inequality. Right? If I plug a 1 in here, I'll get 3 times 1 plus 2. That's 5. 14 minus 1 is 13. 5 is less than 13. So that works when I plug in a 1. But it would also work if I plugged in a 2, because then I'd have 8 is less than 12, which is true. It would also work if I plug in a 1.7 or a negative 18. Anything that's less than 3 works. We can visualize that on a number line. If I sketch a number line here, I'm going to draw a little circle here at 3, and I'm going to shade everything that's less than 3. And so what I'm visualizing is anything that's shaded is a solution for this inequality. Any number, not just integers, any number that's to the left of 3 on that number line would satisfy this problem. I can also express that with inequality notation. Uh, with an inequal or sorry, with an interval notation. With interval notation, you want to write an interval that expresses that your solutions are between two values. Well, what are they, they in this case? They're between negative infinity and 3. And I put those in parentheses. Uh, because you use parentheses when you're not including the endpoint in your answer. Notice that I'm not including the 3. 3 is not less than 3, so I can't include it. If I could include it in the answer, I'd use a square bracket instead of a round parenthesis. But in this case, we don't include the 3. And you never include infinity or negative infinity because they're not really numbers. You should think of them more as directions than numbers. There are the directions. Positive infinity is all the way to the right, and negative infinity is all the way to the left. But they're not actually numbers, so you never include them. They always get round parentheses with interval notation. All right, let's do another example. 
This time I have an inequality of the form less than or equal to. The previous one was just less than. Now we have less than or equal to, but we treat it the same way. Let's approach this the same way we just did. So I want to maybe get all of my x's on the left side and all of my numbers that don't involve an x on the right side. So on the left, to get rid of that plus one, I'll subtract one. I have to do that from both sides. So I have four x on the left is less than or equal to eight x minus two minus one combines to give me minus three. Then I want to get all my x's on the left, so I'm going to have to subtract 8x from both sides here, right? 8x minus 3, to cancel that 8x, I need to subtract 8x, and I need to do that from both sides. So, on the right side they'll cancel, and I just get minus 3. On the left side, 4x minus 8x leaves me negative 4x. So there's one more step to isolate x, I want to divide both sides by the coefficient of x here. So if I have x times a negative 4, I'm going to need to divide by negative 4. And I need to do that on both sides. And now here is an important point to remember. When you are working with inequalities, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, it changes the direction of the inequality only when you multiply or divide. It does not change when you add or subtract, only when you multiply or divide by a negative number. What's this going to leave us with? Well, we're going to have x isolated on the left. On the right, negative 3 divided by negative 4, you can simplify and write it as 3 fourths. And so our answer could be expressed with inequality notation, x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths. Visualize this on a number line. Three fourths is here somewhere between zero and one. So again, I'm going to draw a circle there. And this time I want all the X's that are greater than that to be shaded. And I also want the X that's equal to three fourths to be shaded on my number line. So this time I shade in the circle. I include it in my image, in my figure. So this is a way of visualizing what values you can plug in that will make this inequality true. How do we write this in interval notation? Well, I want everything between 3 fourths and infinity. But this time I'm allowed to include the 3 fourths. Plugging in a 3 fourths does work, so I use a square bracket. But again, infinity is not really a number, so you can never include it, which means you have to use a round parenthesis. And this is interval notation for the solution.